The first thing I pulled from the, the book, Michael's book, and, and, and certainly was inspired by then seeing the play, was this idea that um, a family that is uh, under the boot heel of a very strict and unforgiving um, landlord um, needs to buy time to succeed as a, as a farm. And the father, in a drunken state, buys the wrong horse to pull the plow to save the farm. Um, and, and the warm blood he buys, who we call Joey, um, is in no shape. That breed of horse is in no shape to pull a plow. It's, just, it's not the kind of horse that does you know, you know, manual labor, so to speak. Um, and yet, through a tenacious kind of belief in one another, the young son, Albert, and Joey formed this bond. And together they're able to at least attempt to save the farm by plowing an impossible stony, you know, uh, infertile field. Right in the middle of the search process, we found Jeremy, you know, um, and, and then we moved on to see if anybody else could match him. And, and several, several, four months later, we, we quickly came back to Jeremy, realizing that he was the best uh, person for the part. There were times in the movie when I wouldn't even tell the horses what to do, and they'd be in a scene, and they would be reacting in the scene in ways I couldn't imagine a horse would be able to react or act. And uh, th there are times that you just have to sit back and thank the, your lucky stars that the horses somehow were cognizant that something was required of them that none of us could tell them, but they intuitively were able to give it to the moment in, in the scene. The thing that I kept emphasizing from the very outset was that the horses have to be safe, not even a scratch. The horses had to be safe. You know, if the horse hurts its leg, uh, let's get a trainer to teach a horse how to limp. And the horse says, by the way, it's easy to get a horse to, to limp. You just put a heavier shoe on the right foot or the left, left foot and hoof, and the horse does, uh, uh, you know, just, it, it's a slower move with, with the foot that has a weight on it. Very, very safe. Um, and, and so I just didn't want any, any horses getting hurt. I didn't want that sort of Damocles hanging over my head for the rest of my life because I love horses and, and I wanted, and even though there's some a lot of violence in the picture directed toward horses and man, I didn't want any of the horses to be in harm's way and Bobby kept the horses safe. Both of them were actors that I, I wanted to work with. I had seen Benedict, uh, on British television before and really sought him out, went after him to play the character. And Tom, I didn't know that well, but um, I saw him in a couple of uh, smaller parts in films um, and thought he was kind of uh, the reincarnation of Errol Flynn and thought, wouldn't it be great to have uh, the first person that purchases Joey from the father be this sort of dashing, classy, classic British uh, hero. I really wanted to make War Horse because I really think it says a lot about courage. The courage of this boy and what he endures and, and what he over, overcomes to achieve what he needs and, and, and not just for himself but for his best friend Joey. And it's also about the courage and the tenacity of this extraordinary animal. And, and it, the, the theme of courage kept coming back and back to, and from the play, from Michael Morpurgo's book, and from Lee Hall and Richard Curtis's screenplay. And, and that was the underlying subliminal theme that I think informs every frame of Warhorse. <laughs>